Hi, this is Ashish from Interview Kickstart and welcome to the 12th module of the Frontend System Design course. In this module, we're going to learn about some of the real-time communications that we can design into our front-end applications using communication protocols such as WebSockets. So let's get on with it. The internet is becoming more and more interactive with our daily lives depending greatly on it. We're using real-time communication more than ever. For example, the financial trading where we monitor stocks and equities is a real-time interactivity between the browser and a user. Similarly, we have online games where people are playing first-person shooter games, Minecraft, which are highly interactive and involves multiple parties collaborating and coordinating at the same time. Then we have the data visualization dashboards with software like Tableau providing us with the latest trends, monitoring the cloud computing trends, our online services, depending on live maps when we are driving, as well as using more and more collaborative tools and chat tools where we are working remotely more than before and using tools like Discord and Slack to communicate with each other. We are also communicating in real time using online meeting tools like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and so on. So hopefully, this gives an insight on why designing online real-time systems is more of a priority today than ever before. And in this module, we're going to deep dive into this particular domain and explain how we can design such systems from a front-end perspective. Let us analyze some of the constraints that the current communication protocols pose when it comes to real-time communication. We all majorly use HTTPS as a major protocol between uh, the server and the client today. This protocol is uh, largely a request response based protocol where the client sends messages to the server and server then responds to those messages. Hence, it is not great for a real-time communication. Similarly, we have UDP for streaming um, live content um, or media content, but it is one way from the publisher to the source. And again, it does not facilitate two-way communication in real time. Historically, uh, folks have um, simulated two-way communication using um, techniques from existing protocols like uh, long polling, um, where the client uh, sleeps and uh, continuously polls um, a server to retrieve if there is any update um, from the last time that uh, the parties communicated. But it involves uh, creating and keeping persistent connections and multiple pings before uh, any of the content is uh, delivered back from the server. And a lot of times there may not be any content, so all of this communication and bandwidth goes to waste. We would like to open and use TCP sockets between uh, the server and the client such that we can have uh, complete bi-directional um, communication in real time. But so far, the browsers do not um, support opening such TCP connections between a client and a server. And the reason is that um, while the TCP is a transport layer, um, the HTTPS on which the browsers communicate is uh, an application uh, layer protocol. Uh, and opening non-public ports, uh, other than uh, port 80 or port 443, is a security threat for um, the services. So mostly the firewalls de uh, by default prohibits opening any of these non-standard ports. And even if we allow uh, various TCP sockets to be open in browsers, there needs to be a standard uh, application level protocol as people are using different browsers and uh, multiple websites need to interoperate in terms of content. So hence, uh, there's a need for having a, a full duplex, um, which is an asynchronous and a bi-directional uh, channel of communication uh, at the application level, uh, which is standard across the web and could be based on a TCP level protocol 
such that um, we can facilitate such communication. Before we take our discussion to WebSockets, uh, let's discuss some of the attempts that were made early on to bridge from um, request response protocols to uh, more simulated real-time protocols. We already talked about the AJAX long, long polling where the client periodically sends messages to the server asking for new updates and the server, if there are any updates, would respond back um, with the new updates. This poses a great overhead for on the server side as the server is now uh, maintaining two kinds of connection. One that is serving the real traffic and the other which is um, responding to these things by the client. So it limits the scalability factor for the servers. There were other protocols that were also initiated or introduced uh, prior to WebSockets, such as uh, umbrella of server push techniques uh, under the term Comet. But its integration with clients was pretty complex, given that it sometimes required uh, hidden iframes and other gotchas to uh, make end-to-end -end communication work. With streaming, um, we have, again, uh, UDP and Comet supporting one-way communication, but there is no two-way communication uh, when it comes to streaming. So that was also uh, a domain that needed to be addressed. This brings us to WebSockets. WebSockets is an application level protocol that enables real-time communication on the internet. It keeps a bi-directional and a persistent connection open between a client and a server where both parties can exchange data and messages. They can both do so simultaneously and without having to wait for each other. WebSocket frames are really efficient, amounting to be only two bytes in size, as compared to HTTP headers that may be kilobytes in size. And it completely eliminates the need for polling and increases the server scalability as a result. Let's take a look at the connection handshake process involved in opening a WebSockets connection. The first step is client opening a simple HTTPS connection with the server. The server that indicates that this connection can be upgraded to be a WebSocket application. The client then sends a message back to the server requesting an upgrade within its own header. The server confirms and upgrades connection to a WebSocket. And hence, in a very efficient and a smart manner, over the same TCP connection, the application level protocol gets changed from HTTPS to be a WebSockets connection, which is binary and full duplex in nature, enabling the real-time communication between these parties. WebSockets it's a standard protocol and is supported by most major browsers in the internet. As we can see here, looking at all of the major browsers, it appears that N and N minus one versions of most popular browsers support WebSockets. The exception being that of uh, Opera Mini that has no support for WebSockets. So if we are developers and we are intending to use WebSockets within our applications, how do we support the browsers that still do not support uh, this application level protocol? Do we need to assess browser capabilities at runtime and then adapt our applications to different protocols? Thankfully, this is not the case. Socket.io is a library that abstracts the actual application level protocol away from the applications. It automatically picks the best protocol available based on the browser's capability. And it has support for WebSockets, Comet, and HTTP long polling all in one library. It emulates a concept of a persistent connection for all non WebSockets use cases. Moreover, it allows broadcasting of messages from a single source to multiple destinations at once. A typical setup involving WebSockets is to use Node.js server library, which is provided out of the box, or to use Java or C++ versions that is supported by community effort. And then on the client side, 
we can open a socket IO connection using its client side library within JavaScript. Let's now see how we can use socket IO in our own applications. I will be demonstrating a simple chat echo application where the server receives a chat message from the client and echoes it back. I will be using a local Node.js server for this purpose. And this example is available as a standard example on the socket IO GitHub. All right, so this is the chat example that I've uh, downloaded from the GitHub page of uh, socket IO. And the very first thing that we can see in our package JSON is um, there's a base express server, which is the HTTP server. And this is used to uh, render the page, uh, the chat page, as well as there is socket IO library that provides both the client and the server side um, of socket IO support uh, within this application. And then we have uh, a startup script that simply starts this Node.js server. The Node.js server is pretty simple. It creates uh, an express application uh, and binds it uh, on a port 3000. Um, and then we have a socket IO uh, server side library that we're requiring. And essentially, whenever the connection is made on the socket IO library, uh, we subscribe to um, socket.on uh, method which is called whenever there is a message coming in from the client and then we emit the same message back uh, over to the client the express application um, is simply just providing resources from the server side uh, which is simply the index html page that we need which is the front end for uh, our chat application if we open that page we shall see that um, it is including this socket IO uh, client side script, um, which is what we require on the client side to open um, a new uh, WebSocket connection or a socket IO connection, which happens uh, right at the start of uh, this script. And whenever the form is submitted, uh, we basically emit uh, the value of the text box to the server on the socket and uh, simply when um, we receive a message uh, we subscribe to the on event uh, in order to receive an incoming message and uh, we create a new element um, a list item and we append it with the new content and over here we have a list of messages inside an unordered list where this list item will be created uh, as you can see, this uh, unordered list has an ID of messages, and that's what we capture um, in this variable, and we append the child uh, to the same list. All right, to run this example, I can simply go over um, to my uh, folder. I've already installed the libraries using npm install, uh, so I'm not going to do that again, but I will just simply run npm start. And as you can see, the socket IO server is running on uh, localhost 3000. I can then head over to my browser. And this is the chat interface. And if I simply write hello world and send it back, you can see um, it is echoed back. We can actually debug this page and trace the WebSocket connection handshake. So in order to do that, I'm going to inspect this page using the Chrome developer tools and head over the network section and simply reload this page. So the first request here is to load our page, HTML page, and this goes to um, port 3000 and is handled by Express. And we can see there is nothing about WebSockets uh, at this point. It's just a page, the response is just an HTML. Then the page refers to a socket IO JS client side library. That is the second request that is sent to the server. 
then comes the socket IO connection um, request where we have a client requesting to upgrade um, the connection to a socket IO. And as you can see um, in the response, the server sends back some information uh, that includes the socket ID, the upgrades, um, and the ping interval and so on. It also indicates the timeout uh, for the WebSocket. The third request is basically initiating that socket IO connection from client to server. And it sends back um, the socket ID that we receive, the timeout and so on. Um, and then the server basically um, creates and upgrades that uh, HTTP connection to um, a WebSocket one. And furthermore, we can see that this um, 101 WebSocket switching protocol took place, and now the request URL changes to the WebSocket URL. And it talks about, um, it sends this upgrade to WebSocket, um, the WebSocket version, and so on. So if we now type in any message and send back, you will see that there is no um, other connection being created. And all of this is being uh, handled completely on the WebSockets as a fully duplex uh, two-way asynchronous um, protocol. So hopefully, this example illustrates how easy it is for us to integrate socket IO in our own application stack and get it running with minimal hindrance. And uh, if you do benchmarking, you'll observe compared to the long polling, a quite significant uh, throughput as achieved through uh, WebSockets. At the end of this module, hopefully you are able to understand how to design systems that incorporate real-time communication on the front end. Until then, this is Ashish from Interview Kickstart. Want to become a software engineer at Google? You can, like thousands of our students. You just need to learn from those who've already cleared FANG interviews. At Interview Kickstart, our interview prep courses are developed and taught live by 150 plus instructors from tier one companies like Google and Facebook. Our courses are tailored to help you crack software engineering domain interviews, including backend, full stack, machine learning, embedded systems, data science, and more. To learn more, book your free webinar slot today.